Hello everyone, it's uh, me, Mask. I haven't uploaded in here in a while, but I would like to uh, defend a horror series I enjoy, and I think, obviously it's not for everyone, but I do believe some people misconstrue it as something lesser than it is. The point of this video isn't necessarily to downplay the disturbing elements of the uh, series. Uh, the series in question is called The Painter, though it is confused why people would call it Urban Spook, as the actual channel name. The series is called The Painter. I, I would like I would like to just defend the series because I believe it is very good. I believe it's more than just a slideshow, and I believe some of the criticisms on it have been unfair. I would also like to delve into the somewhat recent drama, a bit late, on Pasture's response and then Urban Spook's resulting response. But yes, that's my uh, kind of a focus on the video. I would also like to delve into the accusation of Urban Spook being nothing but a slideshow. I find this kind of claim kind of funny because it's often made by people who seemingly never have watched the series, uh, which is, you know, they they say it's untasteful, but I think they say it's untasteful and just nothing that because they want to make up for the fact that it actually generally creeped them out. Because if you actually look at the series, it is not that at all. The series mixes both visual, audio, and, pa and the paintings uses a core technique there. So we've already got a quite a lot of creative liberties compared to what analog fans seem to like is still images. Okay, so the irony of people saying that is absurd. Because if you were to straw man every other analog horror series, you could probably say that the Mandela catalogue, especially the first series, was nothing but still images with smile effects on them. It's clearly not that, and anyone who says that clearly hasn't seen the series because the elements have added are visual voice text, the lore added on there, the descriptions, the use of video on there, like the, the mixture of animation or video, depending. I think it's more uh, editing with the original series uh, of the, the first season, and then later on they had a CGI. But the accusation is absurd, and it's just made out of spite because everyone can make straw man analog horror. They just don't like the fact that the Painter series has made them uncomfortable, which is fair, but don't insult the series for that. The series is meant to make you uncomfortable. The usage of the music, which is aggressive, it's so aggressive actually it nearly feels like punching the listener. The music mixed in with the pictures and the slow form of them doing it, and eventually actually including in voice acting, motion video, and all these other elements, makes you genuinely scared what the next painting is going to be. When it says, then this was the painting, there's a moment of pause and you feel genuine dread what the painting is going to be. The Mandela catalogue, once you've kind of seen it, and you've seen kind of the things that copied from it, you kind of expect analog horror to just be spooky ghost, freaks out on VHS camera, makes it spaz out on the ground, you know? It's literally it, like, like the Squimpus McGrimpus, this is why I prefer the Pattinson remake, is literally just at points just animatronic spazzing out in the corner it's not if it, obviously there's more to it than that but if you were to straw man the series you can make it out to be that i want to point out that like the whole reason the series is distasteful is to show that the killer has no limits this is a base supposed to feel like a real serial killer and if you were listening even to kind of popularized like figures in that kind of history, Jack the Ripper was incredibly brutal, but you wouldn't think that if you saw him as a picture in pop culture as just a guy with a top hat and a knife. In reality, he was brutal. The The pictures of his victims are intense. Even, like, to this day, after, hun like, a hundred years, after, like, nearly 200 years later, and his pic and the, the crimes that he committed were in insane. They were the actions of a madman, but pop culture would let you kind of seem like it's a bit more tame. The kind of expectation for a serial killer to be washed down and to be, what, well, nothing but a killer is kind of absurd. Especially when you're going into a series that's meant to emulate true crime. Urban Spooks a series isn't meant to be Mask of Horror, it's meant to be a true kind case that you've just found the serial killer's tapes, or you've just found an evidence file. To accuse this just being still images is absurd, as I said. The, the way the actual voice acting they pick for the 999 call, the mixture of how the music goes on in the series after each video gets more and more aggressive. It's in the similar effect how it actually interacts with, compared to Mask of Horror, as the term is used. Because... Urban Spooks' series is aggressive to the concept because the way it acts, it doesn't care about your comfortability. It doesn't care what you think. It will show and depict brutal acts and it's as senseless as the killer. Yes, they're brutal, 
yes, they seemingly are just brutal for being brutal because that is how a killer works. They don't care about plot details or subtlety. If it's a serial killer, they will be brutal. Uh, and also, the, the, even in these series, it's not that it lets you think out things. The example of the horse, an infamous one, which, yeah, disturbing, because, yeah, it is what it is, but it doesn't tell you what happens. It lets you look it up or think what happens, and it lets you dwell on the fact what happens. What if a series, after the video is done, after you've thought about what it just told you, makes you shiver, okay, in horror, what that implies? No other series has achieved that but the Urban Spook series. When I see the videos pop up and I see, I, I, I know for a fact I'm going to get more intense. It's going to get more and more intense. I, I will dwell further on this on the drama section. Element of the auditory and the visual, I think, is aided by my autism. I'm autistic. Duh, I'm a furry. Because I, I th I'm more sensitive to it. I'm more sensitive to the auditory elements of it that is so aggressive and the element of screaming combined into it. The, the way you see a victim and then the scream is played in the kind of Juxtaposition, uh, juxtaposition of the music. I, I I found that incredible. Like I I don't see that in any other series. That a series that honestly compares to true crime, uh, and it's used because of this because the creator is a talented painter, a talented musician, and knows how to build suspense. It's much more than just text on the screen. And people are saying this. They're just saying this to be spiteful. The, the fact that you know the, the, the frustration I can imagine is just the fact that the series is so brutal and people who are usually just doing mascot horror are coming in to put their opinion on it is absurd because there are completely different creatures. I compare the comparison to someone who is into Stranger Things. There we go, Stranger Things. Good thing I can cut out pauses in this, by the way. Stranger Things compared to Fulci's The Beyond. They are completely different creatures and it would be absurd for someone who reviews and is more interested in Stranger Things to complain about the gore brutality that is in the beyond. It is absurd. And in another element, I would also like to bring up the disturbing elements. And I, I come as harsh. I'm passionate about it because I've seen so many creators kind of shut down because their series is controversial. Uh, is the element of the... Non sorry, let's use that term. Non sorry of the serial killer. Yes. Why? Because it's actually common in serial killers. The serial killer isn't meant to be romanticised like William Afton was in the FNAF fandom. He's meant to be a disgusting, horrible person. And, yeah, sure, I can. I, I don't hold it against someone who doesn't watch a series because they're a sensitive man. I'm a victim of CSA, and I totally understand that. But to imply that the audience somehow has a fascination with that, or that the creator is a nonce, is just disgusting, and you're just using it as a weapon. I find it, uh, the fact that he uses it isn't praising the fact, it is using it as a weapon. Is using the fact that the creature or the serial killer is so evil that not even that boundaries them for them. And he doesn't even go into detail. He's not talking about what he, like, he doesn't, like, it's not even like, say, the uh, FNAF fan game, The Mortibus, when it just is needlessly edgy for being edgy. That would, I say, would be untasteful. Uh, and I would say, in a, like, kind of FNAF kind of series, you shouldn't have that in there anyway. But for a true crime series, the depictions of it are more subtle compared to, say, the Mortis is when it has the voice actor calling an underage girl hot or something like that. I don't remember the exact details, but Urban Spooks a series to uh, kind of dwell on the fact what it means and shows the brutality of what he's done and you kind of picture together. It shows that one text with the Corey thing. Yeah, because he's a serial killer. He's disgusting. He's evil. He's meant to be. It's, it's kind of like absurd to think that like that is somehow off limits to a series that emulates true crime. That's my hot take on that. But like I said, I, I can understand why someone would be comfortable for that, but it doesn't give you the right to try to imply that the fans of the series are somewhat nonsense or that the creator is, because the creator is not. The accusations of that are disgusting and are just used as a weapon. I'd also like to add to some of the controversy around the choice of using the paintings on the shirts. It may seem a bit tasteful, untasteful even, <laughs> but it should be known for context that the series actually was made after the paintings and the shirt um so it, it's you can question it it's whatever i mean like people have jack the ripper shirts true crime t-shirts i would be a bit weird about wearing that particular shirt the Corey shirt i mean like it was made before the series so it's not like he made the series then put that on a shirt just for context um the paintings otherwise they were made prior and the actual show 
or series is made to advertise the paintings, just for context. Hence the title, The Painter. And uh, as I kind of went on mention the pasture drama, I, I actually do like pasture's content. Um, I like their content. I like their some of the things. I, I just think they shouldn't have really joined into a conversation that didn't involve them. The others were kind of already shitting on him, but you kind of have to realise how big of a voice passion I've had there. And I think to put a serious review on a series is way out of your usual depth of things, because for context, Pasha does nostalgia critic tier skits in some of the earlier videos um, with other people coming in, you know, to read scripts and there's a whole storyline there, whatever. And it's like a totally different beast to a true crime emulated series like that. And their favorite horror game is Bendy the Ink Machine, which I think I said in the comment you might find in the video. It's, it's kind of ironic that, you know, someone who unironically sees that as their favorite game, a horror game even, would try and look into the painter. That's not to say that Pasha is a bad person. Uh, I actually disagree with the way Urban Spook used the term autistic as an insult. Don't think he should have done that, but it's understandable why he might have lashed out like that. Ideally, he wouldn't have. But I also think Pasha should have really not joined into a conversation that they had power of having a van base in, and I think it's kind of like, yeah, no, expect that the guy lashes out on you and uses autistic as an insult when you've just kind of joined into a conversation that completely different categories of horror, I think, um, would probably be it. But ideally, I don't think Urban Spook would use the autistic as an insult. But I don't think he hates autistic people. I don't think he... I think he's just an edgy guy because uh, he's from the early internet and... Yeah, I, I, I use the term autistic as an insult too, and I'm autistic. That's an excuse him, but it's just to say you don't have to, you don't hate autistic people if you use that as an insult. I don't think he should have said it either way. That has been my talk in the video. I do look forward to both Pastures content and, and Urban Spooks' content with the series. I do look forward to that. And I want to put my voice out here because the very, very fact is a lot of the series, a lot of the YouTube kind of comments of the thing I've oversaturated with anti-urban spooks kind of thing. The anti-urban spooks bias here. Fake news. No, I'm joking. But I do hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope you change some insight. And if not, that's fine. Anyway, I hope you all who are listening have a lovely day. Uh, and yeah.